So we have done a large number of studies showing that people who have low blood levels of omega-3 fatty acids and are deficient from their diets are at much higher risk of depression and that is affecting 20% of the U.S. population. My early work looked at differences in the prevalence rates of depression across countries, comparing countries that ate a great deal of fish to countries that ate very little fish. So in Japan, rates of depression were very low, 0.1% of the population. In countries that didn't eat fish, rates of depression were 50 times higher, indicative of an essential fatty acid deficiency. And then when we tested that epidemiological difference in clinical trials and gave some people levels of omega-3 fatty acids common in Japan, we had huge efficacy rates in treating depressive illnesses simply by restoring this critical brain nutrient alone. Our understandings of the problems that create mental health issues have radically changed over the years. You know, first we thought it was psychological and, you know, the work of the unconscious. And then when drugs started to treat depression, we thought it was a drug deficiency syndrome like a serotonin deficiency. And now we've begun to appreciate how depressions and anxieties are connected to excess inflammation coming from the gut and transferring over from the peripheral inflammatory system into the brain's own inflammatory system. We know now very well how omega-3 fatty acids dampen that fight and flight and fear response because they are down-regulating the hyperactive immune system. And this extends not only to the stress axis, it extends to the fundamental neurotransmitter systems that we know are deficient or impaired in mental illnesses. In one study, for example, we have a doubling of the risk of suicide attempts when their blood levels are low. And when we give the omega-3s back, the depressions resolve and the suicide risks resolve. And there are many different neurotransmitter mechanisms through which the omega-3s work to achieve that result. For example, dopamine. If you give omega-3 fatty acids to an animal, you can double the number of dopaminergic neurons in that animal's brain, not only through the immune system, but also the omega-3s activate the very gene expressions that make a dopamine neuron a dopamine neuron. You have a whole lot of different, more dopamine neurons. You have a much greater capacity to experience joy. In order to know that a treatment is really effective in depression, you don't go by just one clinical study. You combine a number of different clinical studies together in what's called a meta-analysis. In our meta-analysis of omega-3 fatty acids in depression, and really to our surprise and shock, we found that it was the EPA-rich studies that really had the big effect in reversing depression. That was the one critical finding. And the second was that the effect size of the EPA studies were about three or four times better than most antidepressants. This restoration of fundamental nutrition to the brain works three or four times better than the best pharmaceuticals that have been developed. And there's no side effects, except beneficial ones. So I advocate for consideration of diet and nutrition, especially in evaluating and treating treatment-resistant depression. We know now that about 16% of people respond to taking their first antidepressant. That's not many. If that antidepressant fails and they go on a second one, it's reduced to about 5% of people responding. And when they move on to a third antidepressant, almost nobody responds. So we have this huge category of people who are treatment-resistant depression. I would absolutely like to see more psychiatrists, if not every psychiatrist, first asking questions about diet and seafood and healthy diets in their patients as it affects their mind and understand how much seafood they need to prescribe to their patients and develop mechanisms to help them identify what's good seafood to buy 
for example, high omega-3 rich sablefish, black cod, uh, or herring. And what I have found with my patients is that virtually everyone is deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, and virtually everyone has tremendous mental health benefits from taking four grams a day and, and boosting their bodies up to adequate levels. And the data shows that even someone without depression or mental illness, after they start taking omega-3 fatty acids, their joy scores start to improve, not just from depression to normal, but from normal to a higher level of joy and happiness and contentedness. And my patients have been telling me and teaching me that they often seem to be feeling more centered and better able to withstand stresses. They're just sort of chilled out simply by ensuring that the basic biology of the brain is right.